Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat, and I am back for the hashtag Color Combo 2023. If you're not familiar with this challenge, it's um, a color challenge where Tammy at Lou for Fru Studio chooses a color each month, and then every week she adds one color to that color, to the main color, so you get a combo of two colors. Um, this month is orange. Today is um, like coral or, yeah, just coral orange and um, teal. So those are our colors. So we're going to play with some paint. And sorry, I already have it all over my hands because, you know, that's what I do. So what we're going to make, and this is all thanks to Linda at um, Handmade Iowa. And she did these pumpkins. Oh my gosh, I just fell in love with them. Because <laughs> they're so stinking cute. They're burlap. And I had white burlap, so I used white since I'm doing the coral and the teal just to kind of bring that color out a little bit more. But she did hers in the, you know, the true sort of primitive orange color. And they're just adorable. And then she strung them like... Um, garland or something on a string I'm going to make them into like greeting cards so you could do a million things you could put them in journal pockets like just like they are I know it's not like something you write on but I mean how fun is that you could glue it in the corner and uh, make it a tuck would also be fun great for decoration like uh, Linda did um, so definitely go over there and check out how Linda made these pumpkins because they're who I mean I'm gonna make some so you're gonna see how to make them but go check out her channel she's new to doing youtube videos so um any support you can throw her way would be super sweet of you guys she's awesome so and very fun um so i want to say hugs and blessings to annette linda and uh, skc921 art thank you guys so much for all your kind comments and just support of my channel any kind of activity on my channel is wonderfully supportive. So I thank you, thank you, thank you. So I have, like I said, uh, some white burlap, but you can use any burlap, or any fabric. I think Linda said she painted felt, so it doesn't matter. Just some fabric you have that you don't care if you paint it, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's that easy. So anyhow, I am gonna take my Aline's Tacky Glue and just put some on a piece just to kind of get started. I'm sure there's a million ways you could do this in a more efficient manner, but I probably won't think of them. So <laughs> just bear with me if you're going, oh, lady. Because, yeah, it's me. All right, so you're just taking glue, whatever kind of glue you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be tacky glue. It could be Fabri-Tac. It can be whatever in the world you want. You know why? Because you're going to paint over it. You just want the two layers because that helps give you that kind of structure to it. So that's the reason you want two layers. I can't get this glue out again, just like yesterday. It's being very difficult. I think uh, that is getting kind of thick. I need to get a new one. I haven't been anywhere to get a new one. So anyways, how are you guys today? I hope you're doing fantastic. I just ran to the post office. That's about as far as I got today. And then I just had to come home and make some of these because I saw her do these the other day and I've been wanting to do them all week. But I'm like, you have other things you got to get done. Because <laughs> I know this is sort of a weird color combo to use to make these with. But, you know, now they're, they're um, doing a lot of decor and stuff in like blues and different colors of orange for Halloween or fall, however you want to um, say it. And so I'm like, Phew. I'm making coral and teal pumpkins. I also thought it would be fun, and I might try one actually, since I've already done a pumpkin, is to do a the teal, do a ghost. Let's see what that looks like. So yeah, that's, that's what I think we'll do. So see, just like that, it sticks together. It's no big uh, shake so you don't have to be perfect because look that's definitely not a perfect pumpkin but pumpkins aren't perfect if you look at pumpkins a lot of them are a hot mess you know so there's no reason to make them totally perfect in the first place and especially if you're going for 
a little bit more of a, a rustic type look. So I'm not really sure how I want to do a ghost, but we'll just wing it. You could, um, I think Linda drew out her, uh, like shapes or whatever you want to call them first on paper, cut them out and then used them like patterns, which is probably a lot smarter than the way I'm doing it, but I'm just winging it and you can do it however you like. Yeah, hers, um, she did do them on paper first. I'm pretty sure that was the weirdest looking ghost I've ever seen. Um, I need to make this side. I like that he's kind of fat up here, but this needs to come down more like that, I think. Maybe a ghost was a bad idea, but we'll see how he turns out. It don't matter. It might be cute. It might be real ugly too, <laughs> but we'll see what we get. So thanks for hanging out with me today. You're probably thinking I'm about insane at this point, but hey, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, you know what we should do first? Sorry. I should put the paint that I wanted to put on the cards. So I just have um, these pieces of like a kind of vanilla colored cardstock cut at eight by six eight by six so then they're going to be four by six cards if that makes sense but of course you can make them whatever size you like i'm going to use my bone folder since i have it so there's that one probably would have helped if i wouldn't have got glue all over this paper but you know I got excited. I wanted to get that done. I guess it doesn't really matter if we paint these first. It's all going to have to dry before I can do a whole lot with them anyway. But here they are. So that's what we're going to do. All right. I just have old beat up paintbrushes, which is what I usually use with acrylic because um, I just am not very good to them. So I don't like to use really good brushes. I just buy cheap ones and do whatever. So I'm just taking some of that teal acrylic that I already had out to, I painted this leaf. I think we'll put the leaf on the pumpkin. And that was a leaf that I got at uh, Hobby Lobby. And um, I'm adding water to this um, in a package and I just painted it this color. So you could just do a paper, like if you have a punch or something like that, just do that. And I'm just going to put some of this on here, add some water, and yes, I'm going to blow it because that's what I like. Because it just gives it a cool effect. Well, so does that, but where's my little blower thing? Under a bunch of junk. So this is different than watercolor. <laughs> And this is not watercolor paper, this is just uh, cardstock, so it's going to react different than watercolor paper would. do a little bit of the coral too on the same card even if I add the coral color pumpkin I just think it would be good to have a little bit of both and I oh that's way watered down what in the world happened to that it was fine yesterday not very mixed up I guess more than I need for this part. I'll do, I'll do some over here first to let that dry a little bit. I 
Oops, got some blue in there. <laughs> Just making a mess, people. You know, that's what I do when I get something in my brain and I just want to try it and I have no idea if it's actually going to work. So I think, possibly, I don't know if I should say anything yet, but I think my son is going to come back to this area to go to school. He, um was looking more into his um, degree and was not finding what he was wanting where he's at. I mean, it, it's a great start. It's one of the best um, computer science schools in the area. It's just where he wants to move towards in his career. They don't have what he needs for classes and they do in our area so I think he's going to be coming back next either next semester or next fall so I am happy as pie because then both of my kids will be in the area where I can go see them and all that fun stuff not that that means they'll forever be here stay where we're at but I'll take however much time I can get with them <laughs> So anyway, I was very happy that he's going to do that. He The biggest issue now is he, of course, even though I mentioned it this summer, but got that, he got an apartment and so now he's signed a lease. So he's got to either find somebody to take over his lease or stay until the lease is up because he has to pay whether he's there or not. So, which, you know, we knew he signed the lease, but we thought he was staying up there. But he's been looking into stuff ever since school started. And he found out some information that he needs for his future. And they don't offer it where he's at. So. And he didn't know that before. I mean, it's no big deal because he's, you know, when you're first... Uh, going to college, it doesn't really matter where you go so much, um, because you're taking all that beginner stuff anyway. He didn't have to take quite as much of that. He's actually technically a junior, just because he took a bunch of um, college-level classes when he was in high school. Why is this not? I think it's just too thick, huh? It's a lot thicker than watercolor. But anyway, so I'm very excited if, if it happens, don't know, don't know when, don't know if, if but hopefully it'll work out. Okay, so those are going to have to sit and dry because clearly they're very wet. I'm going to set them over here and then... We're going to paint some pumpkins, or ghosts, actually, right? We got a ghost. Where did I put the ghost? I have the pumpkin right here. Oh, lordy. It's on the floor. Slid off. Okay, so this helps um, sort of make it stronger, you know, when you paint them. So I'm going to do that. I need a paper towel to wipe off my brush. So you glue your two pieces of burlap, felt, whatever in the world, whatever fabric you feel like painting. You could try it on lots of different things. I think I would choose maybe a little bit thicker fabric, although if it's going on a card, it's, it's not that it has to be thick. It's just, it's kind of nice, nice if it sort of stands up for itself or if you're using it for decoration. I guess on a card, it doesn't really matter, but anyhow. I know, a blue ghost is really weird fetish that we'd try it. If it's ugly, we can pitch it. <laughs> it's not a big deal. The only thing is that it really sucks up that paint, the burlap does. Well, probably any fabric almost would, but be better just to put it right on there. And then we will have a pause because obviously getting these dry is going to take a minute. Should have cut out a bunch first. 
I didn't think it through, just got excited. You want a crap, or sorry, excuse me, a cruddy brush to do this because um, you're having to, you know, pounce on that like that and you don't really want that if you're um, using good brushes. And the only reason I'm painting the back is just to help sort of solidify it. You don't have to paint the back. You could leave it, especially if you're using for greeting cards. For uh, decor, you might want to paint the back, depending on if you think it'll be seen. That's cool. That's real cool. I'm going to have to remember that. Okay, so I'm going to set that there to dry. Put that back in the water. Try to wipe my fingers off so I can cut out another one. Now that I've completely gooped up my paper here. Okay, set this out of the way so I don't stick that in that. And we're gonna glue another piece. I'm gonna set this out of the way. You guys be better organized than me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you'll just, you'll be happier. I'm the worst, I'm telling you. I'm gonna do like a bigger section so that maybe I can do more than one, right? I wanna do a blue pumpkin too, is what I'm wanting. But yeah, it would be fun to make like a whole garland with these, I think. The one Linda did was super cute. It was like a little, a little garland that you could just kinda string on some things on a shelf or something. So that was very fun, cute. I mostly put the paper down here so that you guys aren't blinded by the, I think I'm gonna order just a small cutting mat to keep out most of the time. I have great huge ones, but they're so destroyed. How did I get black all over me? Seriously. Okay. that on my pile of junk. Okay, so I did, that's kind of a tall pumpkin. Do we want to do a squat, more of a squat pumpkin? Um, I don't know, I kind of always like tall pumpkins. I don't know why. Maybe we'll do one of these weird sort of shaped ones. And you can clearly see I am not doing anything uh, symmetrical or <laughs> or anything really. It's just kind of a blob. Oh, I forgot the stem. Ding a ling. Oh, Why did I do that? Maybe that's going to end up being another ghost. Put that one aside. Now we're going to have a, a definitely a long skinny, unless I do it this way. Yeah, let's do long skinny because it'll just fit the card better anyway. So if you cut a pumpkin, it needs a stem at the top. If you're not a ding, a ling like I am. But hey, you know, keeping it real over here. This is um, <laughs> live. <laughs> This just goes to show you don't have to make them perfect. And you could do them just if you don't uh, like Halloween, just paint them um, a color, you know what I mean? And you don't have to draw the face on them. And then if you put one of the leaves on them or something like that, I think that's cute, you know? Let's paint this one blue as well so that, um, can I make it this way or this way? Make it this way. And then I paint the little top part black, the stem. 
but you can paint it green if you want. It's just with these colors, I was like, mm, I don't think I want to add green to the mix. So I went with black. But you do you, boo. And you got to go check out Linda's because they're definitely that more rustic, primitive um, colors and all that. They're very cute. I love it. I love primitive type folk art, all that. Let's have a remove our scissors before we goop them out too. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to pour it on there, Amy. See how fast I forget? This is what happens when I do these fly-by-night projects where I see something and I'm like, I gotta make that. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. That was fun. I haven't done that in a while. I'm usually like, oh, I'll make it in a while. Some things just strike you fun. Yeah, so you could totally um, do this, attach a leaf or whatever, and then, you know, put it on a card and voila. I'm going to try not painting the back, actually, and see um, how it turns out. If it's, it'll probably still be pretty darn stiff, because I just think that'll be better. And I'm just going to take my finger, I know, finger play, right? Because I don't want to try to dry that brush off again. And I don't care if it gets down on the bottom part like that. Don't care. Okay, so those are going to have to dry. So you've seen the orange, and we will put the orange one, or the coral, on a card. So I think we'll probably do the pumpkins. I don't know what that ghost is going to turn out like. We'll do a face on it and all that and see what it looks like. All right, I will clean up, get these dry, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back with my little pumpkin and my silly ghost. And I painted um, one of the leaves, and they're these leaves. Maybe. Uh, paper crafts, is it... I don't know. Anyway, they're, I got them at Hobby Lobby, but they kind of feel like paper. I'm not really sure. But anyway, I just painted them with the acrylic paints, so it's nothing uh, complicated. I'm going to put the blue leaf on this one and the coral leaf on that one. But first, we got to do some faces and stuff, right? So that's what we're going to do. Start with the pumpkin. Make sure my Posca pen's working in. I would not, if you have Posca, don't push hard because you're gonna gonna tear up your felt tip on the Posca. So I'm just super lightly, I just kind of drew the little stitch sort of marks around. And you can kind of touch it in spots because it misses spots because of the bumps and stuff in the um, burlap. If you're using a smoother fabric, like a felt or something, you probably wouldn't have as much trouble with that part. But if you just take a minute and do it, it's definitely doable. Um, but yeah, don't drag your Posca across it super hard or anything because that'll just ruin the tip on your Posca pen. And you hardly have to touch. You can just barely touch it and it it will leave a mark. Um, you could stitch around them, obviously, with a sewing machine. I think that's what Linda might have done I'm not really sure because she didn't she just kind of showed how to make them kind of thing and she had a, some that were already uh, done and then she strung them on string um, twine I was gonna use this but then I'm like I think I want to make cards so but you could do whatever you have ribbon or whatever just string string like a thicker twine string type stuff Okay, and then I just, I did, I like that long nose. It gives that uh, primitive look to me and the same with the stitched mouth, but you can do them more regular if you want to. Or like I said, you could just put now the leaf on there and do it more as like a happy fall, have, happy harvest, Thanksgiving, whatever um, type card, but I want a face on mine. But you definitely don't have to do that. You can do them 
any way you like. I just think they'd be cute little, pretty simple cards. I mean, yes, I did make a mess, but we pretty much make messes no matter what we do, it seems. So I'm sure if you're like me, that won't bother you. <laughs> Cause it's all about having fun and the Poscas are good because you can push on them just a little and get a little extra paint um you could just paint them with a brush though so don't feel like oh well I don't have Posca pins or whatever you know what I mean so just I'm gonna do more of the triangular eyes on this this one Yeah, uh, Linda's new to YouTube, but she's been a friend of mine for quite some time. So definitely go check her, check her out. She's very fun. And I'll leave a link in the description box for her channel. There's a silly little mouth on that one. And I'm gonna have to wait a minute because you don't wanna put the white into the black when it's wet or you'll just have gray. <laughs> Weird, right? <laughs> okay, let's try to do a, a ghost here. I'm gonna kinda just run this along here instead of doing the lines. Cause it kinda ends up looking like the lines anyway, or dashes, whatever. Just doing it super light. Drawn silly little ghosts and pumpkins. Biggest thing is getting in all the little spots. Because, like I said, I don't want to drag this felt tip around a whole lot. Okay, do I need a nose? I don't think so, but he's got one now. <laughs> okay, so those are gonna have to dry. So while they dry, um, this one I took paint and just, you know, real quick went over some of that just to rustic it up a little bit. You don't have to do that. That is the weirdest looking ghost. I think the ghost is a no for me. But you can you can do ghosts if you want to. Not that they're not all a little weird looking in these colors, but that look it just sucks up the Sort of like using ink. I think um, Linda said she used varnish or um, something like that on hers. I'm not going to do any of that because I'm just, I'm making them for cards, like I said, so I don't feel like I need to do all that stuff. I'm just going to tip these a little so they have a little dimension or don't look so flat. Whoopsie. See, that's the problem. I think Linda did a much better job. <laughs> but they're so cute and fun. And normally I would do the uh, traditional colors because that's just the way I am. But this is fun to do a different sort of color combo. 
You could even do pink or whatever. I know that pink pumpkin thing is very popular. Okay. Sorry, I just don't want that all over the place. So I think I'm gonna set those aside to dry and then we'll worry about attaching stuff and we'll play with our card bases. I mean, he's not awful, but he'll look better when we get the white parts in his eyes and that. All right, so what we're gonna do with these is kinda just do a little stamping on them, just for some background. But of course you can just have them how they are. They don't have to be stamped. I'm gonna use some of this. It has sort of a Halloween-ish look to it. I can find that. Okay. And this stamp I got a long time ago. Oh, can't even remember what the place was called. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it's a place kind of like BB Craft. I just can't think of the name of it right now. I don't even know if they would still have this one anyway, but. just kind of a fun crackly weird background I like the stars <laughs> and this is just splatters or speckles or whatever okay so for example let's use this one since it's all nice and dry and finished I thought it would be fun to have it on there. And then you could put a saying or whatever. It's Halloween. We have Spooky and Eek and Boo. But he's not really a Boo kind of a guy. Spooky's a little bit big. Um, what's this one say? Rights and delights. Oh, this one says trick or treat. Let's do that one. You could do this on another piece of paper you know, pop it up and all those things if you're not lazy like I am. <laughs> Do all the fancy stuff, you know. Um, I don't know if I want that. No, I think I just want to hit my water bottle a few more thousand times so it'll dong. This is a Micron PN, which is plastic nib, is what that stands for. We could do a, uh, if I can write, this is the worst three one I've ever seen. With a shaky hand, just more. I need a pen that's a little bit better. Nope. 
can go right there. Yep, that's cute. Okay, so I'm just gonna glue him on with just the tacky glue because I think that'll hold that the best. My card's a little wonky, but I'll just put it under some a book or something so that it will get flat. You could use um, like dimensional dots if you wanted to. I don't know how well they stick to this stuff is the only thing, but if you put some glue first, they'd probably be fine. But you can make that into a journaling card like that too, if you wanted it to be able to be written on. Oh, I forgot to put on my leaf. We'll put our leaf on just a second here. Even though I know this isn't a pumpkin leaf, we're going to pretend, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. We're going to go like that. Don't want to cover up our trick or treat. But yeah, if you have a die cut of a leaf, you know, smallish size like that, then you could definitely use that too. So there's one. I love it. I think they're so cute, Linda. <laughs> I can't. I don't know why some things tickle me so much <laughs> more than others. It's just so funny. Anyway, <laughs> I just think they're so cute. This isn't totally dry in his nose, so I'm hoping his eyes are dry. This white one doesn't want to work for me today. And it's got black paint on it. That's helpful. Come on, you. Sorry. I'm trying. Some days. Doesn't matter how you try, it doesn't want to work. So when you do the little light in the eyes, which is what this is, just remember, um, I've said it before, but if you're new or whatever, to do, if you're drawing too or painting or doing anything where you're doing something alive and putting light in the eyes, you want to put the dots on the same side. Because like if I put them on opposite sides, it looks weird like they're, or you know, both on the inside, then he's going to look cross-eyed. So it depends on the look you're going for, obviously. But um, you want to put them on, like, the same corner or edge or, you know, whatever. Just because that means he's looking that way, right? Or that's the direction the light's coming from and hitting his eye. Oh, my gosh, this thing. I don't know why it's being so difficult. comes out when you shake it, but it doesn't want to come out the rest of the time. Okay. And then our little leaf. Let's see. Let's find our... Oh, we got to stamp this still, huh? So that one will go on like that. So let's do some stamping on there. I think I might use Spooky for this one since I think there's going to be plenty of room on this one. For Spooky. We'll just put it on first that way. Oh no. Is it kind of? And then what else do we want? Some more of these. Do we want something else? Um, I think I want more of this. I like this like with the stars. I think it's a good Halloween look.
And I have the great big block, and look, I'm still not using using it. <laughs> I don't know why I do that, but it's called lazy. There's just so many things to get out and use all the time that you start to just get like, ah, oh, just grab whatever. At least that's the way I get. down just a bit huh I didn't put the spooky on in the right spot There, nobody's gonna see it. I'm just doing a squiggle instead of trying to write anything. <laughs> My hands are real, really wanting to shake today when I try to do anything fine motor. Well, I think it'll be all right. You get the idea of what it says. No, because then I probably definitely won't be able to see the spooky very well. Right about there, I think. Campsite, I'm like. <laughs> ah, brain. Silly, silly, silly. But it's something different, that's for sure. And then our little ghosty guy, we'll at least finish him up. He could end up on a card, but I don't know. I'm not going to make another background right now for that. But let's do a little white and see if it helps. I don't love the ghost. I think that uh, you could definitely do it. It's just not my favorite. I like the pumpkins much more. Maybe it's the blue. I don't know, but it doesn't really look like a ghost. <laughs> That one's weird. All right, but I do like these very much. So there's that one and our first one. I think those are super fun. I would definitely give them a try, you guys, because like I said, you can use any fabric you have. If you don't have a uh, burlap, don't worry about it. You don't have to do burlap. You could use whatever you got. All right, I hope you give it a try. I hope you enjoy it, and please do go over and check out Linda's channel just super fun. All right. I will see you guys soon. Have a fabulous weekend and I love you. Bye now.